Controller 2012. It is a domain member. This one's also a domain controller, but it doesn't have to be. It's also a TCP server, but it doesn't have to be. To become a WDS server, I need to go to Server Manager, and I need to add in the role. I'm just going to tick the box to skip this by default and click Next. I want role-based or feature-based installation. Next. This server is selected by default. Next. And if I scroll down to the bottom, the one I want is Windows Deployment Services. Now I want to add in some other features. They do so. Click Add Features. Next. There's nothing else I need to add. Next. And next. I want both roles. And I'm simply going to click Install. Now, unlike its predecessor, uh, Server 2008 R2, when it's installing roles, you can actually close this box and you can keep an eye on its progress on here and you can open up the task details and watch what it's actually doing if you want to or you can just leave it closed in the background and after a couple of minutes it should change to complete it there we go, that's it finished so I now have the WDS role installed. If I close that down, see the Windows key to bring up and go to Windows Deployment Services. Just maximize that window. Now if I expand servers, I'll see this server listed, but as you can see, it is not configured. So right click and configure server and just run through the wizard. There's our prerequisites. Domain member, it, there must be DCP on the network, there must be DNS, and I need an NTFS partition to store my images in. Next. Integrated with the AD. Next. Now, where am I going to store my images? I'm going to put them on the C drive, and it's going to complain because that's the system drive. This is just my test network, so I'm not altogether too bothered. Uh, this is a DHCP server, and we'll leave both those options ticked and click Next. And I'm going to select Respond to All, all Computers, Known and Unknown. and click Next. Now, it's failed to start the service there, which is not uncommon, so I'm just going to finish out of the wizard, and if I go up to my server, you can see there's a little stop symbol on it to say it's not running, so I'll to start, and I'm manually going to start the services, and they've started successfully. So that's my server up and running. Now, I need some install images putting into it. I'm going to create an image group. I'm just simply going to call that a deployment group, and that's where all the images from my client machines are going to be uploaded to. To load them, I'm going to need a boot image. Now, you can either use uh, a Windows 8 DVD, or in this case, I'm using a Server 2012 DVD. And if you look at it in the sources directory, what we want is boot.wim, which is what it's going to use for its Windows PE. Click Next and give this image a name. I'm going to use this one to actually install an image from the WDS server. So that's what I'm going to call that one, and I'm going to give it a brief description. I'm going to use this image for deploying an image from my WDS server. Click Next. Next, and it will import that image. Now I've sped this up for the sake of the video. It takes a little bit longer than this. And when it's done, simply click Finish. So, now I've got an image for installing an image. Let me just go to the properties and change its name. It's not install and image, it's install an image. <laughs> OK. Now I'm going to use that image to create a capture image. And I'm going to call that capture an image. So obviously I'm going to use to take an image off my Windows 8 machines and send that up to the WDS machine itself. Capture an image to WDS. Where am I going to store it? If I browse, I'm going to put this one on C drive, remote install, boot, doesn't really matter where you put these to be honest, S64, and I'm going to put it in there.
doesn't really matter where you put it to be honest I'm going to call it capture image dot wim in fact I will do if I can spell correctly capture image dot wim click OK next and that will create my capture image for me again I've sped this up click finish well, even though I have a capture image it doesn't put it in so I need to add it in as a boot image and it will remember the location where I just stored it so I can grab it and install it as a boot image and those are my two images in now um, I need to put some options into DHCP if you expand your DCP scope, this is a DCP server, yours may be on a different server. In that case, you need to just add these two options into your scope. If you go to configure options, the ones that we are looking for are 66, which is boot server host name. Although, to be honest, I tend to put the IP address in. So I'll put in there the IP address of my WDS server that I'm going to be deploying my images from and option 067 boot file name and in there you want to type in boot backslash x64 backslash WDS nbp.com apply Okay, and that's my DHCP up, and that's my WDS server configured and ready to start accepting images. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us www.pnetlife.com.